Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to the Wave Channel 5, Greenville Public Access TV, as we continue our town series in conjunction with Main Street Greenville, as we take a look at the stores and businesses that make up the downtown district here of Greenville, Ohio. Alex Warner once again with uh, my videographer, Nick Schmidt. Today we've come on West 3rd Street to Geis Audio and uh, Video, and with us is the owner, uh, Brian Geis. And Brian, let's talk just a little bit uh, about your background, first of all. Okay. I was in, in the military in the 80s, got out of the military, and then shortly after that in 86, opened up my business, uh, started uh, on Broadway. You've been here 29 years since 1986? Mm -hmm. Wow, I didn't realize that. How, how uh, are you a Dark County native, or a little bit of background that way? Uh, I was. Uh, we. I lived out in Hollinsburg, so okay. out there, and and then before that, um, kind of. Uh, we live over Lynn, Indiana. Before that, uh, I, that's where I graduated from. Then we moved to Dark County in uh, Hollinsburg. Okay. okay. Went to military after the, shortly after that. Four years, Air Force. Oh, okay. And Did you have a background in this? What was your specialization in the Air Force? Electronics. Electronics. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Electronic communications. And then I got out of that and wanted, I really loved electronics, so I started a business in electronics. Okay. Started, with, started with VCRs and that kind of stuff. And uh, you, know. you started here in town because you said you were over on Broadway to start yeah, with. On third, I mean, on one of the 301 South Broadway is my first okay. location. Okay. And uh, then I moved after a few years, ran out of space, moved to uh, 721 Chestnut Street on the point there. Yes. That's where the tattoo place is now. And then I ran out of space there. Then I come here. So, and I've been here for over 10 years. So. How'd you happen to decide? I mean, it had the space, but you kind of want to get back in the downtown area. Is that how you happen to pick this particular site? No, it just this was a good location for us, parking, the room. So, mm -hmm. and that really made it very attractive when we were looking at them. So, you know, if I'm not mistaken, and you maybe know more about this than I do, but I think this at one time. I mean, there's been various businesses in this particular building, but for a lot of you folks. Uh, go way back. This used to be an A and P grocery store, I think, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, it was an A and P, and well, well, a long time ago it was a carriage, 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 carriage uh, I think, a manufacturer and a repair station. Oh, really? I didn't yeah, know they, that. that. And then that was years, long time ago, <laughs> and then, uh, and then the A and P, I think, uh, uh, got it. There's also a Goodyear was in here, yeah, and then the uh, liquor store was that, you know. Yeah, that's so. Right. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so a lot of business has been here. It's just, you know, just a half a block off of uh, Broadway here on West 3rd. All right, so let's talk a little bit about guys, audio and video. What are some of the main things you do? And then we're going to take a look at some of the stuff Brian and his uh, helper George Mitterman do here. Uh, we do all electronic repair. We repair everything from TVs, stereos. Uh, we also do cell phones. We do uh, tablets, um, computers, laptops. We repair um, broken screens on on phones, which is and pad tablets, has been becoming real popular. And we, uh, of course, we do down to component repair, which uh, with with 30 years over 30 years of experience, I'm very knowledgeable in electronics, so I'm able to do that. We do um, resi residential type of repairs, and we do do some industrial. And uh, we, like I said, we also do uh, PC repair, including laptops desktops we do apple repairs which nobody else except for enrichment does that we do that's a lot of oh, people okay. don't know that we don't do we do actually do apple repairs we also um, do pc repairs and been doing that for longer than any other pc place in town <laughs> so a long time over 20 years i've been to repairing computers now, did you learn most of this in the air force then uh, and then had extra training after you got out of the service or how, i mean because you're talking about a wide variety of different electronics that you have to be able to service and know how to fix. So did, did a lot of this come from the Air Force and then training after that? Uh, a lot of did come uh, from the Air Force. Um, and I actually was always into, you know, using, actually fixing things, everything. I mean, even when I was young, before I went to the Air Force, I, I, everything at the house was fixed. I fixed all the, <laughs> all the electrical appliances and stuff like that. And then I got in the Air Force, I specialized in electronics and then I, I basically used that for when I got into uh, electronic repair, and I went through all the training in in uh, Air Force to learn about electronics, mm -hmm. and then 
along the way the manufacturers have trained us too we went to this right. coin and stuff on the manufacturers yeah. and you have to keep up to date on this stuff I, I suppose you have to go back and take seminars and extra training all the time even with your background and experience because yeah. new Things stuff change. keeps coming up it does yeah a lot of a lot of changes in technology and we are always refreshing ourselves just like most industries like that so okay. well we're going to come back in just a little bit and take a look we'll start up here at the front end of the store and then work our way back and a few other things that i think brian didn't mention that uh, we'll talk about here in just a little bit thanks for joining us once again here on the wave channel five as we take a look at the businesses that make up the downtown area Brian, let's talk a little bit about all these TVs. My gosh, I'm looking at flat screen TVs up here, and it looks like there's probably 25 or 30 of them right here. Mm -hmm. and, and how do you come about getting these TVs, and why do people bring them in, and then you've got them for sale? You folks out there, if you haven't stopped in, my gosh, what a wide variety of TVs he has here. All looks like mainly flat screens, yeah. big screens. Flat screens to, yeah. Well, we, uh, we buy broken TVs, so we get a lot of TVs that way, and uh, we fix them up. And the other places don't know how to fix them or whatever it might be. And we actually repair down a component level, which means we can fix the circuit boards a lot of times on these TVs where there are other places deem them not repairable um, because of the electronic background that I have. Uh, also, we get people coming in, you know, that are needing some money and they have extra TVs. They sell them that way. And also, sometimes people just don't want them fixed and we get them that way. So there's various different ways we acquire the TVs. We go through them. We check them. We back them up with a warranty. So any TV we sell here, um, we actually will put a warranty on it. And on top of that, um, in addition to that, we also give um, uh, discounts. And one of the th things we do is Facebook discounts. We give Facebook discounts. Oh, okay. We also give cash discounts because if, you know, save a little money if they're not using credit card because, you know, that helps because um, I have to pay the fees, the credit yeah, card. Right. So I help out with that. So when we, you know, um, we, we do a lot of uh, used TVs, refurbished TVs, and refurbished electronics of all sorts. So we have in the back here, you can see a lot of selection of very nice stereos we have. And we have, uh, you know, a, a karaoke machine. A karaoke <laughs> machine. And we, we do new and, uh, you know, newer electronics and older electronics because people still buy the older electronics. Boy, a huge change in a TV set in the last, what, 10 years? Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that because I know, you know, when they came out with big screen TVs, my gosh, those things weighed three, four hundred pounds. You could yeah. barely move them, and all of a sudden, boom! How did how that all come about? Well, I think it had to do with a better technology of the picture. Everything going high definition. They had to pr produce the LCD screens that would produce a high definition, 1080i, 1080p picture quality, right. and those the CRT based TVs couldn't do it. Even the big, big projection, the big wide ones, they just couldn't do the picture. And so the, everything's went to the small screen. They're easy. They're actually a little uh, lower price to manufacture. That's the reason the prices went down so much in them. So okay. they can mass produce them easier. Yeah. Now, when, when you see these big screen TVs like this, what, what do you see down the road another 10 years from now? Did I, there's something uh, like curved screens or walls within walls or what, what, what do you see down the road here in say 10 years uh, it's it's uh mainly larger screens is what i'm seeing more and more everything is getting larger and larger larger uh, uh profile of the screens are going from 70 inches up to 100 inches and wow. because they're getting lighter weight they're able to you know hang them on the walls and stuff like that where you couldn't do that before plus the manufacturing aspect with the 4k tvs that are coming out the quality is just you know four times what a 1080p a TV does, okay. so that technology is out and it's really amazing. And there's DirecTV and a few other companies support it, um, um, 4K, which is really if you've ever seen a 4K, you'd be stunned. Yeah, you know there was a something a couple years ago. Was it 3D TVs? 3D. How, what has that taken off, or is that just kind of fallen by the wayside because they're just I don't well, know why. No, the, the reason 3D, 3D has always been around a long, long time. I don't okay. know if you realize that. It's, it's, but in TVs for home use? Yeah, it's, it's been, but it, the, the, you know, the way they um, implemented it on the TVs with the glasses and everything, and, and in fact, uh, the, fa the TVs have become, the processor has become faster and able to do it better and, and a lot cheaper, you know. Okay. And that, it has to do with the quality of the LCD technology has improved. Okay. So, um, you know, um, the 3D is, is a, I call it like a fad almost. I mean, people just don't, you know, it was good, it was, but it's, it's a lot of people, it, it's hard in their eyes. And you have to wear glasses. And people don't like to wear glasses. And, and that was the biggest thing. If you didn't have to wear the glasses, 3D, it'd be cool. But, you okay. know, that's what really deterred a lot of people.
You know, you mentioned, you said that uh, a little bit of a discount for Facebook. How do you do your advertising and marketing? Uh, Facebook must be one of them. Yeah, right? I do. I, I advertise on Facebook quite a bit. I do some on newspaper, but not a whole lot. Um, it's, uh, of course, Facebook being that it's uh, free advertising, yeah. <laughs> so that makes it nice. I advertise, uh, of course, on the uh, storefront, and, and the biggest advertising is word of mouth. Okay. You know, because I, you know, that's that's the best advertisement, and we have very good word of mouth because we, you know, we guarantee everything we sell. So that's that's the biggest plus for us. Well, I'm thinking about it. What are your store hours, and then uh, how do people get in touch with your phone number? And you have a website? Uh, yes, um, the hours are nine nine to five, Monday through Friday. Saturdays by appointment. We you do make appointments. We have to have that ahead of time. And then uh, you can find us uh, on Facebook um, and also my website, which is www.gav, like Guy Saudi Video, gav.com. Okay. And that's, I've been there for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that website for a long time, but it's gav.com. And you can find our location addresses uh, and our hours there. And, and the phone number? Phone number's there, yeah, 937-547-0262. Well, we're going to move around here a little bit and take a look at some other things because you also do work with computers, which a lot of people probably don't yeah. realize. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And we'll be back here in just a moment. Another aspect of uh, Guy's Audio Visual, Visual, Video, <laughs> I'll get that right, Guy's Audio Video, is computer repair and then also cell phones. So let's talk a little bit about those two parts of your business. Okay. Um, we do uh, PC repair, have done it, and for probably 15 years, a long time, maybe longer, probably longer than that. Uh, and also, do we do laptop repair? We replace the, everything on the laptop, including the screen. We do actually, we actually can fix the circuit boards, which we do a lot of times. That's something we specialize in, which other places, other computer places don't have the equipment like we do. Mm -hmm. We have wave soldering, all this type of equipment that we can actually solder and fix circuit boards. Um, we also do cell phone repairs and tablet repairs. We've wow. been doing a lot of that. We replace the screens, circuit boards, and uh, when we, I'll, I can show you a circuit board we're play, planning to replace on a, uh, on a phone. They're pretty small now. It'd be, full, yeah. be amazed. But we replace the screens, the digitizers on the screens, and we do all that kind of stuff. And that all kind of came about, it just developed as the market came in with the cell phones then? Correct, yeah. yeah it's, and, you know, it's, uh, you know, there's no other place really that is specialized like we are to, to be able to do that kind of repair work. So, and I've been doing it, we've been doing electronic repair for, you know, 30 years, so that's just part of what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, as I noticed over here on the wall, you've got a big diploma or certificate from National Radio Institute. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and folks, when you get in here behind the counter, he's got tons and tons of certificates and different uh, your rec awards and recognitions up here. The National Radio Institute, that sounds like something from way back. It is. It was, I actually graduated from that before I was out of high school. So oh, really? yeah, so I actually, <laughs> I actually that was great. If if you look at 1977, wow. So I did that even before I was in the military. So I've been doing this stuff a long time. So, and I, when I was uh, actually when I was uh, when I was probably 16 or so, 15, 16, I had a little uh, a appliance repair business. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> over I, in Lynn. Uh, or Hollinsburg or where? No, this was when I, we lived on the farm. This is when I, we lived, this is way back before we was land. This is when we lived in Winchester. Oh, okay. So we had a lot on a farm, but I had a plants repair business that I did that stuff and oh, wow. repaired small appliances and stuff like that. So, <laughs> and that's the reason I, in 1977, I did that. And so <laughs> I, gra I actually graduated from that class. Oh, wow. Well, that's interesting. I saw all that up there. Uh, a lot of, a lot of experience this man. Around Dark County, are you the only one that does this to this wide range? Of yeah, I mean, that's it. In fact, it's a large area, more than just Dark County. It's, it's getting to be where we're uh, becoming very isolated of the type of repairs that we do. I mean, there's not very many servicers that do that. Okay. So even in Dayton area, there's just not many that do the, what we do. Okay. It's, just, it's, it's just the way it is. It's the moving technology. Okay. We're going to come back in just a little bit. We're going to go back and take a look at where they do some of this repair work and uh, some other things here. As you watch the uh, Main Street Greenville series here on the Wave Channel 5, and also you can find us here on YouTube. YouTube. We'll be back with Brian in just a bit. Well, folks, we've uh, come to the back half of Guy's Audio Video here, and uh, believe me, 99% uh, of the customers have not been back here. 
Uh, I feel like I've walked into a different world back here. I just feel the buzz from electricity back here, all these electronic gizmos and gadgets. And uh, well, I'm thinking about it before we start talking about all this. Uh, how many employees do you have? Just uh, you and then uh, Mr. Minerman back here. Yes, huh? George is uh, does a lot of the repairs for me. He's an excellent, excellent uh, <laughs> electronic technician. He's been doing this for a long, long time, probably close to what, 20 years? Probably close to 20 years okay. he's been helping me, and he does. he's an excellent employee, excellent technician. He does a great job. Honest as the day's long, wonderful person. So, so Now, how does that work out? So you have to take uh, some time off every now and then, so George takes over. Yeah. Do you have anybody else, or is it just the two of you? Just basically two of us. Take, That's okay. it, just the two of us. And uh, if he takes off, I'm in charge of, <laughs> and ahead of everything. And if, uh, if I take off, he takes care of everything. So we're, it works out really good. So when George comes in the office and tells me he's vice president, he basically is vice president <laughs> and everything below, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, George. Okay. Well, let's take a look at some of this stuff. I mean, you've accused accumulated this over 30 years plus, right. correct? Mm, that's correct. Yeah, you've got all sorts of gizmos here. I mean, I'm just looking over here and there's like wires and cables and it just goes on and on. Oh yeah, yeah we. this is where we keep a lot of the stuff back here to work on. We have parts and uh, equipment to fix the, um, the electronics, We, um, we'll, which we can show you here in a little bit. We have uh, some sophisticated test equipment too, we can kind of show you. Um, but um, as you can see, we have several computer workstations and uh, also work areas where we work in the information and look up information on repairing items. Mm -hmm. Two, some workbenches, workbench there for George and for myself, I have workbench here. And uh, we keep pretty busy. Yeah, I noticed as we came back, we're at the far end of the store and then in between the front and the back then, Lots of shelving with uh, parts you keep on hand, and then I assume you have to order in special parts like yeah. FedEx or UPS. Oh, yeah. Usually, you can turn that around within a day or two, or not? Pretty quick. Yeah, it depends on the parts availability, right. and that's all depend on the manufacturer and where we have to get the parts from. It, we try to get the parts pretty quick if we can, but it doesn't always work that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's a typical turnaround time? Just rough guess. Uh, somebody comes in and they've got, and he's even got microwave repair here too. Uh, comes in with a computer and says, you know, this, this, and that, or a TV. What, two, three weeks, a oh, month? No, or less what? than a week. Usually less than a week? Less than a week, yeah. And on the computers, what we offer for business is we offer the same day service so we can get it. Wow. Because, you know, people need them for business. They don't want to wait around. Unless it's something we'd have to order, then we're depending on getting it in. So, unless we'd have, if we have it here, we can fix it pretty quick. Okay. So, and we do all on the computers, we do all the removal of, of viruses and malware and all that. So, and we replace the hard drives and, of course, all the other things on computers. So, yeah. so you folks have to make house calls? We do, we do make them. <laughs> we're actually, we're doing service calls this week. So, okay. we're going to be out uh, uh, this Thursday. We're going to Dayton area, up uh, Sydney, all over. So you do cover a wide area then, don't you? Yeah, we Not do. just Dark County. Exactly. We go a long ways. We can go, we can go almost almost to Cincinnati. We have done since service in Cincinnati, uh, but most of the time we stay in the Dayton area. We go up north. As, we can go as far as Lima, and then we go over to Indiana. We're rich men in that area. So. You know, I've got to ask you this because I've been looking at this. What, what are these things? Those are soldering equipment. Those that's that's what I thought. I was hoping I was going to pick up a hair dryer or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a part of the equipment that we use to fix circuit boards so okay that's what we use for that and uh, those that's a, it's it's a de, it's actually a soldering workstation uh, desoldering water soldering workstation and uh, it's a very high end piece of uh, equipment for working on chips uh, the chips they put on boards oh, really? yeah it's a sm smd work rework station so we can actually remove the chips from circuit boards okay and then this is it almost looks like something the jeweler wear because you get some real yeah. minute things you work on correct? yeah we have to work on work on pretty small stuff exactly here is i was going to show you here is a a circuit board I'll out just of kind of hold that up so nick can get a picture that's that. a circuit board if you can see it um, it's and that's on a, off a TV or what? No, or a computer? A phone. It's a, a phone. A phone, a Samsung phone, and it's right here is how big it is. As you can see, it's very small wow. board. That that's what how people talk to you on the phone. That does everything right there. Wow. Yeah. So it's really a small board, but it has a lot of power in it. And so then. That's not something you solder when you repair or anything, is it? Uh, no, we just replace that. Just replace we board. we can actually solder we, when we have soldered on these. Wow. But as you can see, so, some of the components are pretty small. <laughs> yeah. And we've actually soldered on the components on this, and we've actually fixed uh, connections and stuff like that. We have done that. 
Okay. But it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Well, that's why this man is the pro and the expert here. Again, this is Geist Audio Visual here. Video. Now, why do you keep saying visual? Video, Video here on West Third Street. We're going to come back in just a second. We're going to take a look at uh, maybe something George is working on back here and then talk about some of the other things you do here on West Third Street. We'll be back in just a moment. Here with, uh, I guess, the Chief Bottle Washer and Executive Vice President. This is George Mitterman. Helps Brian Grice here at uh, Guys Audio Video. And well, George, let's talk a little bit about your background. And you've been with Brian for quite a few years now, right? I have helped him out since probably 1991, 92, or 93, somewhere around there, part-time. So you're no rookie. I'm no rookie. <laughs> I've been working here full-time now for two-plus years. Okay. And then what's your background? How, how did you get into this, and then where are you from originally? I'm originally from New York, moved here in 1986, started working at Bonfiglio's Pharmacy, met Brian through there, and started helping him out part-time after I'd get off work from there. And so how I was did always you, interested in electronics. I was going to say, because you had to, um, everything you guys do, right. that's, that's a big step from from pharmacy work. Exactly. It's different. It's a different breed. Yeah. How'd you happen to pick that up then? You said you're always interested in it, but then you had to go through some training or did Brian kind of show you the ropes or well, what? All the training basically went through Brian, but then since I've been working here, I've had to do training modules for certain manufacturers that okay. require us to do training for keeping up with the current technology. Right. Yeah. That's a big thing as yeah. fast as that turns over. Mm -hmm. So what do we have here? We've got a flat screen TV laying flat on his face here. What was wrong with it and what are you doing? has lines in the screen, so I need to find out if a circuit board can correct that problem. If not, then it's a screen issue, and we proceed from that aspect. When you say, is there one circuit board that runs everything, or are there several of them? It depends on the type of television it is. If it's an LCD or LED television, those only have a few circuit boards, and if it's a plasma, then there's seven, eight circuit boards in a plasma TV. What would you say gives a clearer picture? Because you hear about people saying, well, I want LCD or I want plasma this. In your opinion, which, which do you think gives a better picture or just more dependable product? I prefer plasmas myself, but nobody makes them anymore, unfortunately. Oh, really? um, I didn't know that. They don't make plasmas at all anymore. Nope. Everybody's discontinued. I think the last manufacturer pulled out in April or May of last year. Oh, okay. But if people have plasma screen TVs, they can still come here for repairs or... Absolutely. We repair them all, even back to the old projection television still. <laughs> that is going back then. So, so what are we doing here? We're going to pull the screen. I mean, we're not, we don't have time to show all this, but my gosh, there's a lot of little screws to pull the back off. You pull the whole back off of this or the just whole, the whole back uh, metal cover has to come off and then all the circuit boards are exposed from that point. And mm -hmm. Okay. You know, one thing I've always liked because uh, I'm pretty much electronically handicapped. I, I want to know who's the guy that eventually, you know, put the red, the blue, the color coding on the plugs on the back of these things for the different cables. Because even now, uh, you know, I still have trouble figuring out which one goes to which one. If you hook, like, something else onto it, uh, it's kind of tough sometimes. And you can do damage also if you plug yeah. things in the wrong way. So that's why we're color coded. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, this is George Mitterman, and George is in the process of uh, taking care of this. Now, you do just uh, the TVs. Is that your special, or do you do some of the other stuff also? TVs, microwaves, uh, stereos. Yeah. Phones. phones, yeah, phones cell phones, tablets. tablets. On, on the microwave, is that circuit boards too? This is the main cause, or we've got a uh, a microwave drawer at home. You know, it pulls out, bumps in. So if something goes wrong with that, I mean, just something simple like when you push it, it won't go back in. Can you guys fix that kind of stuff? Absolutely. Okay. Well, I'll know that. Well, ours is about four years old. I'm waiting for something to happen to it. <laughs> hey, well, thanks for your time, George. We'll let you get You're back welcome. to that. And then, Brian, why don't we come over here? We want to talk a little bit about, uh, just come on around. Let's talk a little bit about this other thing you do that uh, a lot of people maybe are unaware of, and that's transferring old home movies or old uh, VHS tapes on the DVD, and let's talk about that. Yeah, I've been doing that for 20 plus years, probably close wow. to 25 years. And I started out, and I used to still use a projector. Uh, I have a new piece of equipment. It's a digital transfer piece of equipment. It transfers one frame at a time, and then converts it to, to uh, 1080p. 
Okay. That's a new piece of equipment that I got. Very, very good quality on, on the reproduction. Very good. No flicker, nothing. I still use the projectors. I've got a 16 millimeter projector that I use. And that's what I did to life in Greenville when right. I transferred that. It, and it, it has sound too. So I, I did, um, uh, I was actually, I got that projector for that purpose. I use that. I um, also use eight millimeter, super eight, regular eight. And I transferred to uh, digital format, which is 720p okay. uh, on the eight millimeters. And then a lot of times on the eight millimeters, I, I will add music, you know, yes. and, and that helps a lot. A lot of people like the music add on and I do voiceovers on the, if they want. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also do, uh, of course, VHS tapes. A lot of people have the old oh. VHS tapes and millions of them everywhere, right? That and that, yeah, exactly. And also the eight millimeter uh, camcorder tapes. We transfer all that stuff. We have all the equipment to do that. We have professional equipment to transfer all that, mm -hmm. and we put that on a DVD. Can you take like the little mini DVDs, yes. and you can take those and put them onto a regular DVD? Then we can. Okay. Yeah, we do all the mini tapes and all that. We can do all that. Okay. So we have we have equipment to actually convert that to digital format, okay. and then we put, then we burn it to a DVD. One thing that you folks, some of you are aware of out there, but uh, if not, we found uh, some with the 16 millimeter reels that 16 we had. Millimeter. 16 millimeter reels that uh, a lady named Mary Whelan had, as in Whelan Jewelers, uh, used to be here on uh, Broadway. And back in, I think it was 1939, mm -hmm. the Greenville Chamber of Commerce, not the Dark County Chamber of Commerce, but at that time the Greenville Chamber of Commerce commissioned a black and white film to be made of all the businesses and sites and everything around Greenville. And uh, we were fortunate enough that Mrs. Whelan let us have those, and Brian, just explain what you did with those old tapes, of black and white, silent movies from 1939. Yeah, I converted that, um, and then I, I actually went through, because some of the some of the film was not the best of shape, so I was actually video processed a lot of it to make it improve it, right. and uh, I also cleaned a lot of uh, it up, and then I added a, a music uh, soundtrack, and I also added a voiceover from Mary explaining what the people, all, all the people are on it, which has really added a lot to it. Yes. And then I end up uh, uh, putting it together. Then I sell it, and I still it's still available, yeah. and, and we have it here. If anybody wants to buy, it's 19.95, but we still sell it. And it comes with a transcript of everybody, of all the businesses that were in uh, the film. Uh -huh. So yeah. tells about and, and that. Brian did a great job of, of cleaning things up and then putting in music from the late 30s, kind of early 40s, so it was appropriate. And if you folks haven't seen this. It is really fascinating. 75 years ago, basically, now yeah. 76, 1939 in Greenville, and Brian did a great job with that. 1995, and I'll plug that because I think it's something that if you're interested in the history of Greenville, you need to have one. And then just stop in here at the store and pick up a copy? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, we, we keep them in, in stock. And uh, the uh, we actually put a presentation over, over at the museum, too, on this, too. Yeah. If, uh, so that really... But we keep them in stock, so if you know, and if you need more than that, we can we can, you know, get some together. Sometimes people want four or five of them, but we can do that. So we just have to have little, no, 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 know that a little ahead of time. So yeah, and so all those old home movies you have at home, and old, you know, VHS tapes that take up a ton of space. If you want those converted to DVD, this is the man to come see on that. What do you see down the road? Uh, you know, uh, are you where you want to be right now? Are you seeing expansion or? Do you see bringing anybody else in as you go down the road, say, 10, 15 years? Oh, probably not. I mean, it, the electronic industry is starting to really slow down. The boom is really kind of over because of the fact that people have three or four TVs in their house. They're, you know, a lot of times they're not looking to get something. It's just as a spare TV, if anything. So uh, the, the market's kind of saturated, you okay. know, just the way it is. But I, I do a lot of electronic repair as far as other kind of, in other avenues, for example, stereos. Uh, people don't know, a lot of times people don't know what we do, do stereos, we do. Mm -hmm. And we do, uh, a lot of times, you know, people don't realize we do computers and we have for years. Yeah, right. So, and we do cell phone repairs and that we're getting to, you know, our name more around that for that and tablets okay. and so forth. Okay. Well, once again, what are your store hours? Uh, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., close Saturday and Sunday, and Saturday can be a by appointment. We, have to, we just have to be called ahead of time. Yeah, and if they need more information, your website again? It's www.gav.com. And Facebook? Yeah, Facebook. We're on Facebook, so under Guy Study Video, we're listed on Facebook, and there's a link on Facebook 
too. Uh, I mean, excuse me, there's a link on my page to Facebook. Okay, great. Well, this has been Brian Geis from up here at Geis Audio Video and uh, here on West 3rd Street. And uh, been here in business in Greenville since 86, is that what you said? Correct. Yeah, and so this is the man you want to come see if you have any electronic problems with any anything uh, that we've talked about here throughout the show. So anyhow, on behalf of Nick Schmidt, my videographer, I'm Alex Warner. Thanks, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again as we continue our series here at Main Street Greenville as we take a look at the stores that make up the downtown business area here in Greenville, Ohio. Good night, everybody. Perfect.